One of the most interesting things in our world today are the numerous biomes that plants and animals can live in. One of the more harsh of those biomes is the desert. I mean, after all, it's hot, there's not a lot of food and water, and of course there's a whole lot of sand. The Sahara Desert is the biggest one in the world, and arguably one of the worst places that you may end up in. However, people do go there willingly because the place has numerous discoveries that have and can be found, some of which have truly boggled the mind over the years. So with that in mind, here now are the 20 weirdest things found in the Sahara Desert. Number 20. The Pyramids of Miro I'm going to begin with a basic one, as there are multiple countries that are enveloped within the place that we call the Sahara Desert, and many of those places at one point in time had pyramids. So naturally, some of these are going to be found within the desert sands, and that includes the Pyramids of Miro. Now, if you don't know, this place is located in the Sudan, and when these particular pyramids were discovered, they became quite the sight. Some even state that they were some of the most magnificent pyramids that were ever found. So, you may be thinking that this is the result of the Egyptians, as they were the ones that were most tied to the pyramid-like structure, but here, it's not actually the case. Instead, these were made by the Kingdom of Kush during that period of time, and they were once a very wealthy and powerful empire. Now allow me to help you get a mental picture for how different the pyramids were. These were built of granite and sandstone in the Nubian style, with small bases and steep slopes that were between 6 and 30 meters in height, in contrast with the colossal pyramids of Giza, which are nearly five times as high. It's actually because of the desert and its sands that these pyramids remain so well intact today, and that doesn't even talk about how important they are historically. Oh, and they're also a huge tourist attraction in Sudan, so that helps. So then, what's so weird about these pyramids, you may be asking? Well, you might have pondered, how did these pyramids get lost in the first place? That's because the sands of the desert, whether it be in Egypt, Sudan, or somewhere else, shift around all the time, meaning that the pyramids were literally buried in the sand, and only the local people knew where to find them. They couldn't dig them up, and so when archaeologists were able to bring them back to the surface, it became a big deal. We should all be grateful that these incredible relics of the past are here now for everyone to see. Now it's time for the fancy topic. As is usually the case with the fancy topic, we are now headed back to the infamous nonsense corner with an aliens in the desert story. According to the so-called tale that's associated with the picture, this flying saucer was found in the legendary Egyptian place called the Valley of the Kings. You know, where King Tut's tomb and a whole bunch of other tombs of former rulers are, a place that's widely tread upon all the time by archaeologists and tourists and the like, it's not exactly a barren landscape where you can't find anything. The implication here is that the aliens were a big part of the Egyptian culture, which sadly is a more pervasive theory than you may believe. After all, there are a lot of people who think that the Great Pyramids of Giza were not built solely by Egyptian hands, but also by aliens who had assisted them in one form or another. That theory was so adamant by some, that even DC Comics used that for some of their DC heroes, including Hawkman, Hawk Girl, and the Justice League cartoon Green Lantern. But did they really find an alien saucer in Egypt? Well, of course they didn't. That would have been front page news, and something the internet wouldn't shut up about if it was actually discovered. Now look, it would be cool if aliens were found to have had ties with ancient civilizations, but it would certainly tie up some loose ends about how some ancient cultures, including the Egyptians, were able to do such phenomenal things that seemingly should have been out of their reach. But in reality, we haven't found anything remotely close to being aliens in Egypt or really any other part of the world, at least not yet. It's easy to get wrapped up in pictures and stories, but please, Keep a rational mind on your shoulders and let logic be your guide. What scientists just uncovered under the sands of the Sahara Desert shocks the entire world. May have been a good title for this fancy topic, but it's just not true. As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know your thoughts in relation to what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. Wa and Namas now, you've all heard about the center of the Earth. Well, allow me to take that phrase and use it for my own advantage. 
by showing you the almost literal center of the Sahara. It's known as Wa'an Namas, a volcano in Libya. The reason that this is such a strange place or entity is rather simple. It's a literal desert oasis that's found in an equally literal volcano crater. Wa'an Namas volcanic field is about 4 kilometers wide and surrounded by a 10 to 20 kilometer wide dark black deposit of ash that stands out starkly against the yellowish desert. So if you were to get close to this place, you absolutely could not miss it. Here's an equally strange thing though. The name Wa'an Namas translates to the Crater of the Mosquitoes. Yes, that is its real name. It's also literal in its meaning. The lakes that fill up this oasis are a haven for mosquitoes, meaning that whether you're in a regular place or the desert, you just can't get away from these blood-sucking bugs. The good news is that if you are ever to wander into the place and don't mind getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, you can drink the water there. Unlike the salt lakes that are nearby, this has a freshwater area. It leads many to believe that it's a vital place along caravan routes in the old days where people would rest on long journeys and have a sip of water before heading out once again on their camels. The photos of the place are absolutely beautiful, and while nobody can say go and check it out, if you do happen to visit there, it may be worth quite the hot and stinging trip. Number 18. The Walking Whale now at first, you may think that I'm about to pull the rug out from under you once again with some kind of nonsense, but that's not the case here, I promise. There is a place in the Sahara, known as Wadi al-Hatan, which translate to the Valley of the Whales. Its name, if not obvious, is in reference to the numerous whale fossils that have been located there over the years. So many have been found that the place is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so they clearly see the value in everything that's happened there. But the thing I'm going to focus on is that there have been numerous full skeletons that have been found in the area that showcase that many millions of years ago, there were actually walking whales. Seriously, there are numerous fossils, and some of those have been found with their stomachs intact. That doesn't happen very often in the fossil world. Going back to the walking part, scientists for a long time had pondered how it was even possible for whales to have evolved the way that they did, and now we seem to have that answer via these missing links. Not only does that repaint our visuals of whales from the past, but of the Sahara Desert once upon a time. If there were so many of these walking whales in the area, that means that this part of the Sahara, that is near to Cairo for the record, must have been a much more hospitable place to live. It would have had more water sources, plants for the giant whales to eat, and more. And then over time, the land began to shift, and this branch of whales died out. So the species as a whole slowly went into the oceans to live. Now personally, I think they made the right call, because it's just way too hot to live in the desert. But it also raises a question of what other bones may be found out there. Number 17. Libyan Desert Glass While this is one of the stranger things on the list, I also think that it's one of the coolest because of what it may imply. Picture this, you're going through the desert in a vehicle when all of a sudden your tires hit something that make a scrunching sound. Sand and stone don't really sound like that, so then you stop and get out, only to find yourself standing on glass. Now, sand is something that can be made into glass, but not via the passage of time or simply having large sums of it together or else the Sahara Desert and every other desert like it would just be a massive sheet of glass. So then what is it that's going on here? Well, that's the weird and quite cool part of all of this. Libyan desert glass is made by the impact of meteorites. That's right, the heat that meteors from space create when they hit the desert sand is so strong, it basically turns them into instant glass. So to give you some further context, one analysis claims that the heat that's required to make this kind of glass like this in such an area and in such a fast way would be like dropping a nuclear bomb in the desert. And we all know they didn't do that in the past for obvious reasons. Furthermore, there are many who feel that some of this glass is actually millions of years old, which would have only meant that something from outer space impacting the desert sands would have caused it. It's crazy to think about, but we do know that meteorites can hit just about anywhere on the planet, and sites with this glass have been revealed to be within what appears to be impact craters. And so, space may have accidentally given us one of the more rare substances on Earth. Number 16. Eye of the Sahara 
Now, I showed you the desert's center before, but what about one of its eyes? In the western part of the desert, you're going to find a natural rock formation that's called the Eye of the Sahara, because when you look at it from above, it really does appear to be like an eyeball. Oh, and it's big enough to be seen from high up, as the base of the formation is actually 50 kilometers wide. Now, obviously, it's not something you would expect to find in a desert, so what actually caused it to be formed? There have been a lot of theories, including one about Atlantis, believe it or not, but science eventually came through in the end. Scientists now know it to be an uplifted geologic dome, characterized by layers of sedimentary rocks that had been exposed over millions of years by wind and water and erosion. That's important for scientific reasons because, not unlike tree rings, the layers of this rock can expose what the Earth was like the further back in time that you want to check out. So, while it might just look like a cool formation that pops out of the desert, it's actually something that is so much more unique. Number 15. Ancient Rock Art Welcome to another UNESCO World Heritage Site, a one that has a great importance to both science and history as a whole, because there are a large amount of rock art within this place. More than 15,000 drawings and engravings record the climatic changes, the animal migrations, and the evolution of human life on the edge of the Sahara from about 6,000 BC to the first centuries of the present era. There's all kinds of reasons why that's cool. First of all, drawings like this help to paint a more clear picture of what life was like in the desert and beyond. After all, based on the images, there were not only groups of people living here, but herds of animals that they hunted and more. By studying things, we gain even more insight into the past to figure out how things got to where they are now. Nobody knows or has the clearest picture of history in Africa, and so finding more locations like this will help to fill in the gaps. Number 14. Cave of Swimmers Here's another place where ancient rock art was found. It's almost as if the ancient peoples of the world wanted us to find the stuff. Or, you know, maybe they just like drawing. The Cave of Swimmers is found in Libya. It's believed to have been drawn, at least at the beginning, of around 10,000 years ago. And if you're curious, the reason that it's called the Cave of Swimmers is because of some of the depictions of humans in the cave. They're drawn in such a way that it looks as though they're actually swimming. But they aren't alone. They also have pictures of various animals in the place, which includes hippos and giraffes. It may seem weird that people would draw something like this in a cave, but you have to remember that back then, they didn't have communication methods as we do now. This was their way of not only speaking in some ways, but also writing down their own history. Plus, the swimming and the animals could have meant something special or important to the one who drew it. We as a people may never actually know. But what we can do is analyze these places and find out what history has to show us. Number 13. Timbuktu Depending on who you might ask, Timbuktu is either one of the weirdest places that you can go to or one of the most historically relevant places in all of Africa. For me, whenever I was a child and I asked my mother where we were going, she would always say Timbuktu in a way of trolling me in such a way that made me upset and never want to go anywhere. For people in modern culture, the word Timbuktu is meant to reference a place that is so far away, you can't easily get there. And that's what you hear the word being used more as slang versus the great history that it had been in its golden years. So, to find out what this place is in the Sahara Desert, well, it's curious, because you would think that something like this would not have thrived, let alone survived the day, and yet here we are. The true history of Timbuktu can be tied to multiple people and empires, but the biggest one being the Mali Empire. It was here that the city was a major trade area due to all the routes that were happening in and around it, and then it became one of the biggest learning areas of the world, including a place with a thriving book trade. Eventually, it fell into decline and not what it used to be, but it is another UNESCO World Heritage Site, which means that it will be preserved for more people to learn about over time. Number 12. Chot El Jared Now, as I've already told you, there is water in the Sahara Desert, but not all of it is something that you would want to drink or even be close to. One such example is this place, the largest salt lake in the Sahara Desert, but it might also be the biggest salt lake in all of Africa. It just really depends on who it is that you talk to. 
It's almost twice as large as the Great Salt Lake that you'll find in Utah, which should highlight just how big of a lake that I'm talking about. And this place, including the nearby town, which is the gateway to the Sahara, has been used in all kinds of movies over the years because of its oddly picturesque location. And if you don't believe me, even the Star Wars films have been shot here. So now you know where Tatooine is on Earth. You are very welcome. If one were to drive by the area around the lake, you would be amazed at all of the colors that you would see and the rainbows that catch your eye. So, while it may be one of the most inhospitable places to be within Africa, there's also a beauty here that simply cannot be ignored. Number 11. A Massive Crocodile It's been a while since I've talked about fossils, so how about I show you one from not a whale, but a crocodile? It doesn't sound so bad at first, as places like Egypt are known for their crocs, especially the Nile crocodile, but this one that I'm going to talk about is absolutely massive compared to the crocodiles of today. This croc would have been just under 10 meters long, which may explain why it was named Macamosaurus rex. Between its bulk and its long snout, it's believed to have been the biggest crocodile to have ever lived in the oceans. That's right, this was an ocean-dwelling croc, and I hate to think about how effective it was in the water. The belief is that this particular croc lived in an ocean that had once divided Africa and Europe, and it likely was one of the apex predators. It's so big, in fact, that even the skeleton of the beast is said to have been taller than the average human being. Now, thankfully, these kind of crocs are not around today, but they can still get pretty big, and you still wouldn't want to mess with them. Number 10. The Nabta Playa now let's shift from something a bit scary into something a bit more mystifying. Specifically, the archaeological, not to mention astronomical site known as Nabta Playa. This place is found within the Saharan Desert, and it's said to be over 7,000 years old, and it's the oldest known astronomical site in the world. So, what was the point of these rocks pointing out of the sand? Well, that would be to help track the summer solstice, which would lead them to know when the monsoon season was coming. The beauty and mystery of the site is how they were able to figure out how to make the place work for their goals. I mean, clearly they did get it to work, but it's also one of those many things that the ancient people of the land did that confounds the modern mind today. It's a key part of history, and places like UNESCO help to preserve it all today. Number 9. The Lost Army of Cambyses Throughout history, Africa has been the site of many battles and wars, not to mention empires that have risen and fallen. As such, you'll definitely find the relics of those armies and empires scattered throughout the sands, but what about an entire lost army? The lost army of Cambyses was a mythical legion of soldiers that were tied to the Persian Empire. They apparently went into the Sahara Desert and never returned, and nobody knows exactly what it is that happened to them. It was even written about by some famous Greek historians. Fast forward to 2009, and relics from within the Sahara Desert seem to reveal the truth. <laughs> they weren't actually lost. They may have just been buried alive by a vicious sandstorm. There were 50,000 men in this particular army, so just imagine all of them becoming consumed by the desert. Number 8. Spinosaurus I'll be talking about dinosaurs quite a bit in this section, so you'll have to bear with me. In the case of this one, I'm talking about the largest carnivorous dinosaur to have ever existed, the Spinosaurus. The thing made T-Rex look tame by all comparisons, and it had multiple advantages that, to this day, scientists have still not fully figured out. For example, the bones of one found in the Sahara seems to imply that it was a semi-aquatic animal. That would explain the giant fin on its back, which no other carnivorous dinosaur of its type has. If this is true, that also means that it was a terror on the land and in the water, and that should make everyone happy that we don't have to deal with the thing today. Number 7. RAF P-40 Kitty Hawk As I just said, Africa is full of a lot of history because of the battles and wars that took place there. And that also includes recent wars from the modern day, like World War II. The proof of this can be found from 2012, where an oil company of all places stumbled upon an old RAF P-40 Kitty Hawk that was said to be from World War II. It's believed to have been one of the many places that the U.S. made for the Royal Air Force via the Lend-Lease program that predated when America entered into the war. 
The plane was used for the North Africa campaign, where the Germans had a big foothold on the continent, and the story attached to this particular craft is that the pilot was trying to get back to a base for repairs, but had to crash land in the desert instead, and it was likely a soft landing depending on how fast that it was going. Number 6. Huge Dinosaur Bone in Niger, a legendary dinosaur hunter has found all kinds of dinosaur bones in the sands of the Sahara Desert. Some of them have truly been history-making findings, as they have revealed new species of dinosaurs that had not been previously unearthed. Equally as important, he not only found huge dinosaur bones, but he found bones from human civilizations. The man himself dared to go into the Sahara in 2022 in an attempt to try and get out 25 tons of bones that he knew were just lying around beneath the sands. As you could imagine, getting just some of the bones out of the sand would be extremely difficult, and then you factor in all the environmental dangers and the various bandit groups that would steal them for themselves and more, and you may just find it odd that someone would go to all that trouble. But to make the discovery of a lifetime, people are willing to take the risk. Number 5. Gobero Skeletons Here's another find that's made by that same man. He gets around now, doesn't he? In this case, he was part of a discovery in a location that was known as the Green Sahara. It was a special place that existed within the desert long before it was such a thing. In fact, the place was once much more vibrant before serious climate change issues rocked it over the course of about 5,000 years. The people that lived in the place had a decent society that was based on the skeletons that were found in what is now referred to as Gobero. Many of these skeletons were found intact, and they were deemed to have been part of a spectacular burial that further paints a picture of what life in the place was like a long time ago. Number 4. Lost Fortresses Now there are plenty of things that have been buried in the desert over the years, but what may surprise you the most is just how completely some of these things have been buried. For example, when people began looking at the Sahara Desert from above Libya's part of it, they then found over a hundred fortresses. That's right, the area was so full of fortresses that once belonged to the people known as the Garamantes, which back in the day had inhabited that part of Libya. The fact that they had so many places like this is astounding in its own right, and then you have to figure out how the sand slowly buried all of them, and you get quite the reveal for archaeologists. Ironically, it was because of oil companies mapping in the desert that they were able to even make these findings in the first place. Number 3. Lost Rivers when you look at something as vast and menacing as the Sahara Desert, you might not think anything resembling water would be there. Yet, as has already been proven, that is absolutely not the case. The catch is that there are massive amounts of water if you go straight down. In this case, a Japanese satellite was able to use radar to look over the Sahara, and they found a massive river system in it that actually stretches for over 500 kilometers in Africa and goes right up to the coast. Finding this brings up many questions about what Africa may have looked like, including how this presumed river affected the many people and natural formations that the Sahara once had. Plus, if one such river does exist, there are probably many, many more. Number 2. The Tenemur Crater If you like the last entry about a meteorite, you'll want to check out this tale about the Tenemur Crater. It's found in the desert, and not only is it believed to be an impact crater from a past meteorite, but one that took place well before the dinosaurs had even roamed the planet. That would certainly put it in an interesting part of history, and it makes you wonder what it affected when it came crashing down. There was actually heavy debate about this crater regarding in how it was formed, with some even saying that it might have been born from a volcano. However, when they then examined the rocks themselves that were there at the bottom of the crater, they could tell that it was one that had been created by a true and heavy impact. It makes you wonder just how many meteorites have ever touched down in a place like this over the many millions of years. Number 1. The Saharan Horned Viper now, curiously, we haven't touched on many of the actual living creatures that exist in the Sahara Desert, but to be clear, there are those that live there every day, and they absolutely find ways to survive. One you'd likely want to avoid, though, is something called the Saharan Horned Viper. Can you guess why? What may surprise you is that this viper does not come out to play in the daytime. Instead, it loves to go on the hunt at night. In the day, it will bury itself in the sand, which not only makes it blend into the environment, 
but likely keeps it cool from the blazing sun. And if you see one in the wild, you should absolutely avoid it. It's called a viper for a reason. It has venom that can kill a human if you're unfortunate enough to stumble upon it. And in the Sahara Desert, there's not exactly a hospital anywhere nearby. Well, that's all from the vast area of the Sahara Desert and all of the weird things that have been discovered there over the years. Were you stunned to see so many odd things found there? And which items did you think were the most weird? Perhaps you know of another strange thing found there that I could have mentioned on this list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.